Hey guys, uh, Andre Harris in the back out once again with a brand new video for you and welcome to another video blog and I've not done one of these for a little while now and um, I was kind of going to do one on Max Verstappen and some of the shenanigans that went down at Kota this past weekend but something came up pretty big today in the world of Form 101 and I felt like, you know, I put it to a public vote on Twitter and this subject won out. For those that haven't seen the news already, Daniil Kvyat, who's been basically treated like a rag doll since going back to Toro Rosso in the middle of last season, well, he's out of the Red Bull program for good. Um, effective immediately, he he is gone from the Red Bull Driver Academy and sponsorship program. He is out. Uh, Brendan Hartley will be back in the car with Pierre Gasly, which I think is the fourth different driver lineup that Toro Rosso has had all season. And yeah, Hartley and uh, Kvyat will be their team lineup going forward um, for the rest of the season. And uh, yeah, this is this is big. Um, this is this is a big one. And uh, people want me to talk about this, and I will. And it's I, I remember doing a Dre brief video talking about Kvyat before, and Kvyat because I know people gave me shit for how I pronounced his name in said Dre brief video. Um, but he's, he's had it brutal for the last year and a half. I mean, let's not forget, 2014, he made his F1 debut for Toro Rosso, and he was pretty good. I mean, he wasn't as good as Vern at the time, but Vern had already had four seasons of experience and had a couple of, you know, nice moments, was the youngest ever point scorer in F1 for a little while, um, until Verstappen came along and, you know, had a really strong home qualifying in Russia during the first Russian Grand Prix. Um, went to Red Bull in 2015. Outpointed Daniel Ricciardo over an entire season. Yeah, Daniel Ricciardo was a little bit unlucky in terms of reliability that season, but Kvyat held his own against one of the really, really strong elite level drivers in Formula 1 in, in, in Danny Rick. And yeah, outpointed him over a year. Had podiums and I don't think you need me to, to tell you that, you know, 2016 was when it all went to shit. I mean, I remember China that year where, you know, he a lot of people got mad at him for a phantom squeeze on Sebastian Vettel in China, which was never really a thing. Vettel got mad for no real reason. And, you know, got mad at Kvyat after the race, but Kvyat had every, had every right to just, you know, shrug it off. Finished in third, was a great result for him and was all happy. And, you know, I was really happy for him. It was a great result and he deserved it. Next thing you know, one race later, he torpedoes Sebastian Vettel from behind at Russia. Hits him twice, takes him out of the race. And then one week later, um, Red Bull announced, oh yeah, we're going to swap Kvyat for Verstappen. And, well... I'm not blaming Verstappen for this. Verstappen's got his camp, and I think he's got a lot of very pushy people that, of course, are going to want the best for, for, for Max, especially his daddy, Oss, who's now on the Red Bull payroll himself as a quote-unquote talent scout. Um, you know, he was always going to be a victim in all this, and you could tell that the Verstappen camp were getting itchy feet. Like, why isn't Max in the Red Bull yet? He's clearly good enough because... Uh, you know, on, on face value, it looks like he beat up Carlos Sainz, but he didn't really that season. They were about the same. I think Carlos out-qualified Max over the year, and Max made a few rookie mistakes like at Silverstone, but Max got all the hype, all the attention for, you know, being an being a, an exciting overtaker, and, you know, the entertaining guy, you know, the, everybody's new hot shit, and... Uh, yeah, Verstappen got the gig, and of course, one race later, he, he goes and wins in Spain, and it automatically, like, sort of vindicates Red Bull's decision to bump him up, and Kvyat had to go back to Toro Rosso, and by that point, Carlos Sainz was having a breakout season. You know, Kiv um, Sainz was scoring points every other Grand Prix, pretty much, and then Kvyat was just struggling everywhere, just couldn't get any real momentum together, and that's been the story for the last season and a bit now, really, and... Now he's gone altogether, and I don't care what anyone says, that kid's still got value. I know the F1 experience has been pretty wretched for Daniil the last year and a half, especially given his treatment, which, I mean, you can debate whether he should still be in F1 till the cows come home. If you ask me, he's 23 years old, he's finished on the podium in F1 on multiple occasions, a top five runner in a championship, 
Like, he has still got plenty of value to another team, if you ask me. And I think him being set free could be the best thing that could happen to him right now. Because I'm sure people like IndyCar and high-level sports car teams will come knocking for a driver of his talent. He's a great kid, he's a great driver, and I, and I'm, and I think he, all he needs really is a shot in the arm. Because I think it's obvious that the Toro Rosso demotion did a number on his confidence. Um... And that's ultimately I think, what's come back to hurt him in the long run. I think that he's done a great, great job, but I just think that he's been very unfortunate and basically been in the right place at the wrong time. Um, they were look, I think Red Bull were looking for any excuse to get the nil out of the car, and what happened in Russia was like the perfect alibi to get him out of there for Max. Um, and then he goes back to a team where Carlos Sainz has now made his own and is... One of the best um, up-and-comers in Formula 1 right now. I think Carlos Vincota proved his, his opening race at Renault. Showed that the man is... The, the Toro Rosso form was no fluke. The guy is a really great driver. And he's every bit on the level of Hulkenberg, if not better. And, yeah, Daniel's been kind of left out in the shade. But then Daniel had one of his best drives of the year, Akota, this past weekend. Finished in 10th. Finished in the points, got a point for the team, and led them going forward when Hartley was still obviously getting used to the car. And I think you know, Hartley had a solid P13. Didn't think you could ask much more out of Hartley than that for a first time in the car. But Kvyat led the team, got that P10, got a point. That was as good a drive as he's had all year. But it was only his third point scoring finish of 2017, and that's what's ultimately, I think, come back to bite him. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see where they are going forward. And yeah, by by any measure, I think, like you said, you can debate whether Kvyat should have been in F1 till the cows come home. I mean, there's a case you could make that he probably shouldn't be in there anymore. But I think by any account, um, the way he's been treated on a basic human level has been fucking terrible. And he deserves better treatment than what he's gotten. Like, imagine going into a job, finding out you've been promoted, and then a couple of months later they're going to demote you again, and then basically put you behind somebody else who's really hot shit, um, and then eventually boot you out of the team altogether a year later. I mean, like, you basically got cock-teased, and that's what Kvyat's had to go through for a long time now, and... Uh, on a basic human level, I feel I am I emphasize with him, and I have a lot of empathy towards Daniel because that's awful. It's brutal, and it's it's not very nice. And I I I I, I wish for better things for him because you know he's he's a good guy, and he he deserves better than what he's had to go through. And like it like I know F one is a cold, ruthless world sometimes, but I think a little bit of empathy goes a long way, and I could definitely understand why. Daniel has, you know, gone through the ways and his confidence has been knocked and it's just not worked out because he's been treated like half-priced shit. And, and you know, I, again, I hope another series or maybe even another F1 team gives him a chance. I mean, his options are limited. If he's out of Red Bull, then sure, he can go anywhere he likes, but who's going to take him on right now? I mean, Sauber are looking like they're going to be a Ferrari junior team. Williams, he's not eligible unless they're getting rid of Lance Stroll because... Um, they need uh, they need a, a senior driver over 25 years old, and in, in, in Kvyat's it's 23, so he's not eligible for that. He's going to be competing against Pascal Verlain on the open market because, again, by by what Toto Wolf said yesterday, it seems that uh, Merckx can't really help him anymore. He said Williams is the only option, and again, as I said, Williams can't take him on because he's not 25. Um, and I think Williams kind of wants Felipe Massa out. But if they do, they have to replace him with another senior driver. And they've got Robert Kibitza and Paul the rest are as potential options for that as well. Maybe even Felipe Nasser, who's 25 now, who was 25 this past April. So the options are limited. Again, maybe IndyCar will come knocking for him because, I mean, IndyCar are going for their own bit of city season right now. Connor Daly was announced today that he's going to be out of AJ Foyt. They're cleaning the decks. Um, Daly and Munoz are gone. Kanan and somebody else will take... 
those two seats up. They're going through some difficult times, but they have a lot of new indie car teams potentially come in, like Junkus Racing. Um, like Carlin may or may not be coming in. They've they, they found out today that they've bought a chassis, but we don't know whether Carlin's actually going to run a team in the series full time yet. And they've got their own guys that, that could do with jobs like Charlie Kimball, Max Chilton. Um, you know, again, now Daly and Munoz are on the open market. Um, with other youngsters already in spots like Carl Kaiser's getting temporary races and Zach Veach is going to be in Andretti full time next year. It goes on, and you know the, the amount of seats that are available at IndyCar are drying up quite quickly. But on the whole, let this be a lesson that Red Bull are, are cutthroat, they're ruthless, and I don't like how they treat their young talent. And it, like, like, it's not the first time they've done this. I mean, Jaime Algasuari, Sebastian Buemi, um, Scott Speed are all young guys that the system chewed up and spat out, and... You know, only a handful of them have had better careers after. I mean, I don't know how they haven't managed to convince Antonio Felix to Costa to come back. He's another great talent who has missed out on opportunities because, again, Kvyat got got in the front door over him. But their academy has treated their drivers like cattle for some time, and it looks like this one may be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Um, and now their academy is looking pretty empty. They've got. Obviously, Gasly, and, and I'm sure he'll be in there for next year. And um, maybe Brendan Hartley will get that seat full-time in 2018. But beyond that, they've got nothing. And that could be a concern going forward, especially the way they treat their drivers. God knows what's going to happen in the future. If Gasly doesn't work out, what the, where the hell are they going next? Dan Tictum hasn't got a super license. And outside of that, they've got pretty much no options at all. <laughs> so, God knows what they're going to do. Um, but... I'm going to leave this to you guys in the comments. Let me know what you think of the situation. Let me know what you think of, of uh, Kvyat being out of F1. Where do you think his future may lie? And what do you think of Red Bull making this decision? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Apologies for like a bit of a Burke wearing these sunglasses, by the way. I've got a bit of a sty over one. I don't, I don't want you guys to be looking at that for 13 minutes. So I thought, let me just wear some glasses and look, look like a bit of a Burke now for future reference. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I've been Harrison Wellman. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you guys soon on the Motorsport 101 podcast. Sayonara.